guys, how's it going? I am so excited for today's project. We are gonna be planting up all 40 of these hay racks that run along the front of our fence line here. We did this last year for the very first time and it was incredible. We enjoyed it so much. And I planted so many plants up here. We had lemon coral sedum, superbina large lilac blue, supertunia royal magenta, and supertunia bordeaux. It was a beautiful blend of plants, but I think because it was the first year of the project, I was so excited that I overkilled on how many plants I put in each hay rack. Like I put 11 plants in each one of these hay racks, which is probably a little bit too much. So I'm taking a different approach this year. In fact, let me show you what I have planned in terms of plants. We've got them in the back of the truck. So I'm gonna use a mixture of three different plants. We've got Supertunia Vista Bubblegum, which is a favorite of mine. We have Supertunia Vista Silverberry, and then a Sweet Caroline Light Green Sweet Potato Vine. So instead of 11 plants, I'm gonna use just five in each one of these hay racks because I really wanted to show you guys how you can create something like this, any type of project, either in a container or in your landscape with huge impact for a lot less if you choose the right kind of plant. And all of the Supertunia Vista series, they're amazingly vigorous, ama they're just amazing plants. And like no matter where I've planted them, they always do really well and they grow huge, full of bloom. So I've got all three of these plants kind of lined out in the basket because I wanted to show you kind of what I'm thinking in terms of layout. So I'm gonna start with a Vista Silverberry on this side and then a bubblegum. My sweet potato vine will be in the middle here, silverberry and then bubblegum again. Um, so you'll notice that we already have soil. This is fresh soil. I brought a bag of it up here. This is what they're full of. Um, just because this is such a small reservoir, I don't feel like I can recycle soil from last year because those plants utilized every last ounce. In fact, we will be adding fertilizer. We fertilize on a weekly basis to keep the plants really happy. Um, annuals that you want to perform really big need quite a bit of food. So I'm also, I haven't done this yet today, but I'm gonna be adding in a slow release plant food into the soil before I plant. A Couple of other things I wanted to mention. These are the same cocoa fiber liners from last year. There is a difference in quality. You can find really thick ones or fairly thin ones. Spring for the thick ones because they will last you for several years. Um, so these liners came with the, with the hay racks, which were all sent to us by garden artisans last year. And then I also wanted to mention the irrigation. So we did run drip. And I think when you're doing a project, especially of this size, you wanna make sure to have irrigation set up really for, for anything. If you can run drip to any of your containers, it makes life so much easier. But we did four two gallon per hour emitters per basket. And in the spring, we ran it for about 10 to 15 minutes every day, which is what we'll start with today. And then as it gets warmer, or if we have extra windy days, we'll increase the amount of time. So like last year when it was above, probably I think above 90, um, we started running them twice a day. So morning and evening for 15 minutes each time. And our plants were extremely, extremely happy. So let me go ahead and plant this one up just so I can show you guys how this whole thing's gonna go. Every single one of these hay racks will be planted exactly the same way. But I just wanna give you guys a feel for it. Um, so in this hay rack, I'm just gonna add a few tablespoons. It's a brand new container. A few tablespoons of this continuous release plant food. And I'm just gonna work that into the top layer of soil. And I do have gloves for the rest of this project. I just forgot to grab them. And I'll start with my center plant. That way I can make sure to get everything spaced proper. So I think that's right here. And I'm going to position these right in the center of the basket like this because I'm hoping they'll trail back and um, on the front side. So it's pretty on both sides. Okay, we'll do the silverberry on this side, just like that. And these sweet potato vines, so the difference, last year I used lemon coral sedum, which actually did really, really good. I was surprised with how much water it was getting. It held up and it grew really nicely, but they're not quite as vigorous as a potato vine. So we didn't get that really strong foliage accent. So I'm excited for that. But you do have to be mindful. These are water hungry plants. They like to be moist quite a bit of the time. So that's something else to consider when you're picking out plants. If you have an irrigation set up to your pots, it's no big deal. Um, but if you don't, you might wanna you know, adjust accordingly. Also, when you're picking out your plants, it's good to consider the growth habit of all of the plants. Because like with the lemon coral, like I said, it did really well and it did, but you couldn't see it very well. Um, because all the other plants were so vigorous, they were kind of growing over the top of it. And if you came over and kind of spread those plants apart, you could see the lemon coral there just shining and looking beautiful. 
Um, but it's, that's something to think about. All of these plants kind of have the same vigor. So I think they'll work really well together. Um, and so you'll be able to actually see our foliage accent this year. Okay, so I think we're gonna set up a camera and just get a time lapse of me planting the rest of these. It's gonna look a lot faster than it happens in real life. Here we go. Oh my gosh, you guys, it turned out so pretty. I mean, if you would have told me even two years ago that I would be planting up 40 hay racks at my own house, I would not have believed you. This is just gonna be such a beautiful show. And I think it could be scaled to any size, whether you're doing one pot or one hay rack or 10 or 40 or 100, you could kind of take these same planting principles and get the same results. I think that this looks way more appropriately planted than it did last year, to be completely honest. I think that the plants will be happier. They won't be in such hard competition with, with each other so that they'll be able to flourish a little bit more. And the last thing that we're gonna do today is we're gonna plant up these large estate planters right here with some other fun stuff. So Vertigo Penicetum, you guys. This is an amazing grass. They grow so big. In fact, let me see, four, four to eight feet. So anywhere from four to eight feet. And I think that that depends on how much sun it's getting and how much water it gets as well. I think it'll get bigger with um, more of those two things. I planted these in several spots last year and they just, they were a spectacular grass. So I decided I wanted to do it in these planters up here and then to break it up because it is a darker colored grass and the blades do get quite large as the plant grows, it's got a really strappy appearance, but I wanted to break up the dark grass with the dark pot with some really pretty fun color underneath. And I'm also going for the same thing. I'm using way fewer plants in here, six Supertunia Vista bubble gum, just spaced as evenly as I could around the outer part. And then this one is exciting. So I think this one's new this year. It's called Diamond Mountain Euphorbia. You might recognize the name um, Diamond Frost, which is very similar, but Diamond Frost is more of an accent plant. It kind of grows and just like, it's more of a wispy appearance. This one grows two to three feet tall and like 18 inch spread on them. So I think it's gonna be a gorgeous stair step effect. We'll have the huge grass, the really pretty just kind of block of white, and then the uh, pink kind of spiller supertunia down below. So we've already filled these up with soil um, as well. And then I put the slow release fertilizer in. So I am ready just to pop these all in and then we can get an overall look. And what we haven't shown yet is that there is kind of a repeat on the other side here. We have the same container on this side of the opening, and then we had room for one hay rack on this side. And I thought it was important, even though it's a little short section of fence, to kind of mirror what we had going on so it looked like a cohesive idea. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'll just start right here and I'll get this one planted. So there you have it. They are all planted up for the season and I'm just so thrilled to see color. I think it's gonna be just such a gorgeous show. We did turn the water on just to test everything. Um, so you can see right here, I've got um, eight two gallon per hour emitters dispersed fairly evenly throughout each one of these large containers. And then on the hay racks here, you can see kind of how they're running. You can see that water just coming out really nicely. And we watch them pretty closely throughout the first at least day or two that we're running the drips to make sure we don't have any leaks or any you know any problems um, any plugged emitters from the previous year because we leave this out all winter um, we don't have to put the drip system away because uh, there's no water left in it all the water comes out of these right here um, so we just kind of look at them closely to make sure that nothing's happened over the course of a winter so anyway i hope that these type of videos are helpful to you guys just to see what containers like this look like in the beginning while i think it looks absolutely beautiful i cannot wait to show you what they look like even a month or two from now so stay tuned for those videos we'll be doing lots of updates throughout the season thank you guys so much for watching and we will see you in the next video bye